Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? Thank you for tuning in. Sorry. Oh, shoot. It's a little windy out, if you can't tell. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I appreciate you coming back to the channel. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're having issues with YouTube, like everyone else, hit the little bell, so that way you get posted every time we post a video. Um, anyways, the truck is a mess right now, but kind of want to do a video more like the... Uh, the talking dirty style videos I used to do or I'm still gonna continue to do or whatever um, but basically I have seen a huge like influx of these questions on the forums like all the the Facebook pages and all that stuff and I, I want to comment on them but I know like I can't just keep up with everyone so I'm gonna make this video I'm gonna put it out to you guys and just let you guys in on a few secrets of the Duramax I guess um, now I don't have every specific that I want to like say I guess but I can basically give you the baseline of everything you need to know and today's topic of conversation is Duramax operating temperatures it is asked more times than not is my trans too hot is my oil pressure good is you know like my thermostats clogged and head gaskets and this and everyone just and now the guys on the forums are really really informative and I love going there because it answers a lot of questions but basically I'm putting this out to the masses so you guys all understand what everything is safe and I'll explain to you why and how and do the best I can and if anyone has any further input feel free to drop in the comments. So basically to start everything off um, we'll start from left to right and just go through. Now I, this is a 2005 LOI. Uh, I don't know if you guys all know but it's the red truck so it's basically stock. We're just going to talk about this one right now. and. Uh, Basically, unless you have aftermarket cooling stuff, this is what your truck's gonna look like, run at, all that stuff for uh, all your normal operating temperatures. So to start out with transmission temp, which is right here on your gauge. Now some people don't trust these gauges, some people put in your own ones. Uh, even if you put in aftermarket ones, you'll probably get about the same reading. Now, I will let you know, if you look closely, 200 degrees is in the middle of the gauge. Now, I'm not gonna say they're always the smartest, but the engineers that make GM trucks, they usually know what they're talking about. So if 200 is in the middle of the gauge, I'd say it's probably okay. But I'm gonna go further into that and say it is definitely okay, and your transmission usually runs at about 100 degrees above ambient temperature. So, now this is normal like highway cruising or like just normal around town i'm not saying going up hills i'm not saying beating on it normal like everyday driving so if it's 70 degrees outside and your truck's at the operating temp and you're just cruising around town you're most likely going to see anywhere from 170 to 200 degrees depending how much traffic you're sitting in depending what your truck you have because from 2001 to 2004 the Allisons did not have, I want to say it's either the G or the C solenoid or E solenoid. It's a solenoid in the transmission that basically bypasses the transmission when you're sitting in traffic to keep it cool. So instead of, it like lets a certain fluid recirculate. I'm not 100% sure guys, I don't build transmissions yet. We're still getting that at some point. But anyways, transmissions usually about 100 to 110, 120 degrees above ambient temperature or outside temperature. Now going into that, if you were towing, if you were, you know, going up a steep hill and there's traffic and you're stop and go, this, that, you know, all these other factors key into it. Um, 210, 220, and I'd say creeping up to 230 is probably okay. Um, you don't want to keep it there for long. But again, going back to the engineers who make the gauge, the gauge goes into the red at about 280 degrees. So, that being said, your transmission running at 200 to 10 on a hot day is completely okay. I have a BD trans cooler on the orange truck with the built trans, and that's another thing, is built trans are known to run a little bit hotter. Uh, just, 
I, I'm not sure why the clutches create more heat, better friction. I, I don't know. I'm not, like I said, not a not an expert here, but just kind of going over things. So I have a built trans. So I had a built trans with a BD cooler, and it cooled the temperatures down. I saw about uh, 60 to 80 degrees above ambient, so it did help a lot. But basically, that covers the transmission side of things. Your transmission is about 100 degrees above ambient temperature, and that's like the the easiest way to say it and that's how I explain it to people uh, if you're towing something heavy up a hill and you see 230 I mean it's I wouldn't say it's the best thing but it's not the end of the world so your transmission is going to be fine check your fluid change your fluid and your filters whenever it's recommended I do mine uh, depending on how bad it is or if it starts to smell burnt or anything from driving how hard I drove it Anywhere between 25 and 50,000 miles, depending what truck. Um, you know, do whatever, do whatever you do. You guys are smart. That's kind of my recommendation. Uh, if you've been beating the hell out of it, change a little sooner. If you just kind of cruise in it and don't romp on it and it's not really tuned or anything, change it 50,000. You know. Uh, so next, with that, we're gonna roll into oil pressure. Uh, this one isn't really ever a topic of conversation too much because it's never really an issue. I believe the Duramax check engine light comes on at 7 PSI of oil pressure. That's when it throws the check engine light. I don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Anyways, um, if your truck's cold, you'll notice in the morning when you start it up for the first time, you'll see 60 to 80 PSI of oil, depending how fresh your oil is, how, you know, all the, how, you know, you should run 1540, that's what I run, that's what most people run, so usually between... A little bit above 60 is okay. Um, now when it warms up, and obviously with heat, your oil thins out. So you'll see, uh, let's see here. We'll, we'll start it up and see what I'm at. I, I was just driving for an hour, so. We're at, we're at almost 30, so 25. 25 is about probably normal. Uh, 20 might be on the lower side, depending how old your oil is. And, uh, you know, just do your oil changes every three to 5,000 miles, every six months, whatever you do. Uh, replace it with good oil. I'm not going to get into the whole oil thing because it's all preference. I'm going to try and order some Senpico oil. I think I said that right. Senpico, Senpeco, whatever it is. Uh, it's a really good oil that's manufactured and produced or whatever in uh, the United States, in Ohio, I believe. Uh, I'm going to get it for the race truck, the orange truck, and probably just run it in this just because. But you have to order it, which is kind of makes it a hassle, so you got to order it in advance. But that kind of covers oil real quick. Um, you know, just make sure you have good oil pressure. And uh, yes, these gauges on Chevys do break sometimes, and they don't work. So you can't always trust your dash, but just be mindful. And finally, the last thing I want to cover today, because it's a very big topic is your coolant temperature and so I'm gonna close my door that way we're not dinging here um, yeah, I'm gonna get this out of your way so you can see so your coolant temperature and same thing goes with the transmission 210 is in the middle of the gauge for a reason so I'm gonna cover this I'm not yet again not a hundred percent sure but I believe the thermostat's open at like 174 and 208. I'm not sure for factory Duramax. There's something close to that. So, with that being said, you and yes, you have two thermostats in Duramax. A low temperature and a high temperature. So, 210 degrees is completely okay. Now, if your thermostats are bad or your two, 174 is gummed up or whatever and it rises right at 210 and stays there maybe change them but if it fluctuates between about 180 and 210 your truck is just fine depending how you drive it now you know how old how many miles your clutch fan has on it or hours however you want to say it how dirty your radiator is how often you do a coolant flush that kind of will determine how fast your truck bounces between how hard you're driving it to um if you're going up a hill, if you're racing from stoplight to stoplight, you're 
you're getting on the gas pretty hard or you're just up in the RPMs quite a lot, you're going to see 210 and it's going to stay up there for a little while. If you, you know, if you're just cruising down the highway at like 65, it's a nice, you know, 70 degree day out, it's probably going to sit at about 180 and stay there. But it is completely normal for your temperatures to bounce between 180 and 210. It's just the the hot thermostat or the higher thermostat opening to let it cool off and then closing opening and closing that's all it's doing um, now obviously if you see above 210 and it stays up there you got an issue um, me personally I've had two trucks that have had head gasket issues and never once have they overheated I'm not saying it's not the case they've never overheated in my situation so I can't speak on that, but usually bad start with your thermostats, your coolant cap, and your water pump, you know, depending, like if you've had your head gaskets done, if the truck's not that high in mileage. Uh, mostly I look for bubbles or puking coolant for head gaskets, but not the topic of today's conversation. Uh, so 180 to 210 is completely normal for your coolant. That is A-OK. -okay. I have my trucks all run 210 quite often because I have a lead foot and I have never ever 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 had an issue from overheating or whatever um, and after I did my head gaskets and head studs on the orange truck and did you know a water pump in it it still ran at 210 it always has and it never goes above 210 but yet again, that goes back to if you're going up a steep grade hill with your AC on, you know, hammering down, it might creep up a little bit. It might creep up to, you know, 220, 230. I have seen, I have seen 230 in my orange truck going up a steep hill with the AC on. There was a sign that said turn the AC off, and I was like, and I was like, no, I'm fine. So I kept going, and sure as, sure as could be, you know, halfway up the hill. Truck started creeping up to, you know, 220, 230, and I was like, all right, time to kill this, and uh, roll the windows down, and it was a hot day. It was about 100 degrees out going up that hill, and it got hot. So same thing for towing. It, there's there's a lot of variables that go into everything, but on a normal, a normal basis for driving 180 to 210, completely okay. You know, 220, you start seeing hotter than that. If you're hauling something... You know, turn the AC off, try to get it down. I know it sucks sometimes, but turn the heat on to cycle it through the heater core and help cool it off. If that doesn't work, pull over and then just make sure everything's okay and maybe change out your thermostats. Now, I know, I believe Mishimoto makes low temperature th thermostats that are like, I want to say like 165 and then 190 or something like that. I was thinking about doing them in the orange truck, but not 100% sure. I guess if you live in a really hot climate and you're really towing all the time and whatever, it's it'll help. Me personally, I'm gonna run the OEM ones for now. So that that kind of covers everything for normal operating temp. Now I know Chevy gauges suck, um, so sometimes your gauges could be faulty. So be careful. Uh, an edge monitor or you know pillar gauges or whatever. I'm gonna get a monitor for these trucks just because they're not super built up this is just a stock truck so I just want to monitor things um, but basically that covers it guys that really covers everything I wanted to talk about today and I want to go into a little bit of mail time here that will do the sun's pretty bright today and this was actually sent in to from someone you guys all know Duramax Life sticker from the well-known Truck Masters. He has been a big help to me and uh, he really inspired me to help me with my channel and everything and he's really done a lot for me and he's a great guy so I'm sure 99.999% of you guys already watch him. Uh, he is a great guy, knows a lot, he's doing a lot of installation videos 
more than me, which I'm gonna try and start getting into more now. Now that I'm back, I'm finally kind of getting settled in. Settled in, and this is gonna be a good weekend, guys. I have a lot to do. So my weekend starts right now, actually, and this is Thursday. So we're gonna stay busy all weekend. But with that being said, I know he just posted a video about starting a YouTube channel and all that stuff, and I'm not gonna go deep into that right now because this video is already stretching on pretty long. But I wanted to say a huge shout out to Truck Masters, first of all, which he's always down below, and you guys probably already follow him. Um, Silverado HD TV just started a YouTube channel, and he's a really good guy. He's got a 05 or 04 60 gas 2500 HD, and he really reached out to me and has really been become a good friend of mine, helping me out with everything. So I appreciate that. So thank you. Um, so if you guys want to go check out his channel, I'll put a link down below and that That's just kind of it guys. I mean, I've been I've been busy. I've been trying to get back into things. So again, thank you for tuning in to the Duramax diesel channel I will continue to make more videos all weekend. I hope this helped you out with all your Duramax questions regarding operating temperatures I will see you guys later probably tomorrow and I'll get back to a more steady posting schedule. Thank you guys for tuning in the channel. I appreciate all of you guys. I wouldn't be anything without you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys this weekend. Thank you.